GNC Home to a myriad of protected habitats and species, it is one of the most biodiverse regions of the Mediterranean. Emerald waters surround the thousands of Greek and Turkish islands. Dive beneath the surface and you will find vibrant underwater forests. Such as the Posidonia seagrass meadows, said to be the oldest living organism on Earth. Within these marine ecosystems are countless invertebrate species including the spiky seabed dweller, sea urchin. An extensive range of fish can be observed at all Aegean coastlines. And sea turtles too reside in these waters. Nine marine mammals also permanently reside in the Aegean, such as the common dolphin and the majestic fin whale, the largest marine mammal living in all the Greek seas. The Aegean holds a certain magic to it, supporting an abundance of marine life of all shapes and sizes. But lurking in these waters is an invasive species, more abundant than any living creature. Perhaps the most dangerous predator to marine wildlife and often unable to be seen. microplastics. Five to 12 million tons of plastic are estimated to be released into the marine environment every year. They are slowly infiltrating the world around us. But these plastics can exist in tiny forms, making their consequences even more difficult to be seen. But what exactly are microplastics? Let's break them down further. Plastic debris can be categorized according to size, including macro, meso, micro, and nano forms. Microplastics are further split into primary and secondary types based on their source. Primary microplastics are purposely produced to be that size. Secondary microplastics, on the other hand, arise from the breakdown of larger plastics. Composition-wise, plastics are made up of carbon and hydrogen atoms, bound together in polymer chains. Often, other chemical additives are present, which can separate and further contaminate the environment. These tiny plastic fragments pose a severe threat due to their abundance, potential ecotoxicity, ability to act as chemical vectors, and persistence in ocean ecosystems. In fact, all of the plastic used to make this stop motion was found on a single beach in under half an hour. Spring 2020. A group of environmental scientists are investigating the effects of microplastics on the Greek coastline. Today is Wednesday the 18th of March and we're partaking in the Great Nerdo Hunt uh, at Pesoriamos Beach in Samos, Greece. 
The Great Nerdle Hunt is a project where people from around the world partake in data collection um, of nerdles that are found across our beaches. So nerdles are plastic pellets that are typically found to be between one to five millimetres in size, which does actually class them as microplastics. Um, and these pellets are actually used to make most of our plastic consumer products that we find in our supermarkets today. So during the production of the pellets, up until the manufacturing of the plastic products, accidental spills can occur, which results in the pellets ending up within our environment. So what we're doing today is we're measuring the length of the whole beach and then we'll start from one end and we'll walk down collecting sand and sieves and we'll see how many nurdles we can actually find. So we've definitely found a lot of nurdles, especially at the back of the beach. If you uh, just sit in one spot, you can stay there for a good few minutes just collecting them. It's truly amazing how many people have partaken uh, with this data collection across the globe. If you go on their website, you can see the map of all the beaches that have been surveyed. Maybe there's one close to you. If not, you can definitely take part and do your own beach. Indeed, although these tiny plastics may often be invisible to the eye, they are a lot more prevalent in our lands and seas than we could imagine. By scanning the Mediterranean seas and analyzing water samples, the scale of plastic pollution becomes clear. Even in our atmosphere, high levels have been documented. Unsurprisingly, the spread and associated risks of microplastics have become hot topics of research in recent years. This includes Angela and Kylie, who are conducting research at the Archipelago's Institute of Marine Conservation. My project focuses on identifying microplastics in sea urchins. Sea urchins are grazers, so are good indicators of the environment around them. They'll be more on rocks and take in more algae, so they're taking microplastics directly from the environment. Sea urchins are collected by freediving, so we'll wear wetsuits, flippers, snorkel, mask, and weight belts, and we'll go free dive for them. can be collected right off the rocks and we have to identify the species right away. We were dealing with the Parencentratus levitus, the purple sea urchin, and so we would collect the sea urchins, make sure they're the correct species, and then put them in a glass jar or metal bucket for analysis later on. On the same day that we collect them, we will dissect the sea urchins and then we will collect the stomach contents after we filter them, then we will look at microplastics under the microscope. Every beach that we've surveyed, we've been able to find five sea urchins, and every sea urchin has had microplastics in its stomach contents. They've varied from about five microplastics to over 40. Before I came to Archipelagos, I didn't realize that microplastics were such a big issue. So to find microplastics in every sample, which has now been over 50 sea urchins, was very surprising. It also makes me realize that because these are at the lower end of the food chain, that animals that are higher up on the food chain are also being harmed by them, including humans. This is a bigger issue than we realize and we really need more awareness for microplastics. But can plastics so small be such a large problem for marine animals? Can they really pose a threat to the human population? In 2018, 114 aquatic species have been found to contain microplastics. Previous archipelagos necropsy research on 18 sea turtles exposed over 3,000 microplastics. 
On the Greek mainland in late 2019, a staggering 15 kilograms of plastic was found inside of a stranded sperm whale. More and more research is uncovering the contaminating effects of ingested microplastics and the even smaller nanoplastics. Assessing the impact at a molecular level, numerous in vitro and in vivo studies of many aquatic species have reported several cellular defects. These include problems with cytotoxicity, proliferation, genotoxicity, altered gene expression, oxidative stress, growth inhibition, and neurotoxicity. Looking at this from a behavioural point of view, one research group demonstrated the effect of nanoplastics in adult zebrafish. They noted changes in movement, feeding and shoaling, as well as predator avoidance. Nano and microplastics have been observed moving to a higher trophic level showing their path into the human body through the food chain. Our water supplies may be another entry source. A key concern is the level of danger microplastics pose to humans. After ingestion, particles smaller than 150 micrometers may be able to cross the gastrointestinal epithelium, the lining of cells found in our small and large intestines, potentially leading to systemic exposure. Many researchers have already started identifying how nano and microplastics may enter and interact with our bodies at different sites, revealing the negative impact it has on human health. However, the fate of microplastics in the body is a topic that remains controversial and uncertain, but research continues. In a world so heavily polluted, yet so dependent on plastics, what can we do? The continued global effort from scientists and governments to understand the extent of the problems are taking us ever closer to a conclusion. As the main source of microplastics in our oceans through poor waste management, addressing these systems is the highest priority. Waste management should be addressed by the government including new laws that will decrease pollution and increase recycling. Increased crosstalk between ecologists and epidemiologists will clarify the hazards of bioaccumulation through the food chain. But it's up to all of us. Although incredibly useful materials, we must consider just how essential our use of plastics really is. Plastics we often use for less than an hour will remain in our oceans for more than a lifetime. From our highest mountains to our deepest seas, plastics are everywhere. We are all responsible for solving the problem. We must continue valuable research, like the work at Archipelagos, and around the world, to continue our quest for knowledge and protect our planet.